Thank you for joining us for the first training session on Cable Bus. My name is Curtis Lines, and I will be guiding you through the training session. This presentation has been broken up into short segments so that you can pause, play, or replay this recording at any time. Today we are going to explore the Cable Bus. First question we often get is, what is a Cable Bus? A cable bus is a parallel cable feeder system that uses multiple insulated conductors within a rigid enclosure as a power distribution system. For low voltage systems, a cable bus is generally designed to transmit 1000 amps or more and 300 amps or more in medium voltage systems, depending on the size and number of conductors. The cable bus is well suited for connecting a transformer to switch gear switch gear to an automatic transfer switch, or equipment of any kind to a backup system. Cable buses are versatile and can be used on solar farms, wind farms, data centers, hospitals, dams, schools, or wherever reliable power distribution is required. One benefit of a cable bus is that impacity requirements can be met for any situation. As long as we can provide a cable at the voltage rating specified by a customer, we can design a system to suit their specific needs. If a conductor is not available, superior tray systems can have a conductor custom made to suit. Our experience with high voltage systems is that the customer generally supplies their own conductors and has run into a problem with routing them safely and in a way that works efficiently. We work to provide a solution that works for their specific needs. If a customer does not supply their own cables, we are able to supply high voltage conductors if necessary. Our competition generally includes bus duct, cable trays, and pipe conduit. We will discuss these in greater detail during our second training session, but as an introduction, we will talk about how cable bus compares to bus duct. Let's look at the superior bus and its advantage over a bus duct type installation. A disadvantage of a bus duct is that they typically sandwich multiple bus bars together, which creates a single large conductor for each phase and neutral circuit. Conversely, cable bus systems typically use multiple conductors per phase. In the event of a short circuit, high current running through the conductors creates large magnetic fields around the conductors. The opposing magnetic fields generate forces between the conductors. Since a cable bus has multiple conductors per phase, the cables are arranged in a specific manner in order to cancel the magnetic fields generated during the power transmission, reducing the forces created between the conductors during a short circuit compared to a bus duct, which provides no field cancellations. Because of this, a bus duct system must be heavily braced to withstand the forces created by the conductors during a short circuit situation, whereas a cable bus requires less bracing. This means that a cable bus is much lighter than a bus duct, requires less supports, and is easier to install. A result of the lower forces on conductors, a short circuit event is not near as catastrophic to a cable bus as it would be for a bus duct. In the event of a short circuit on a bus duct, the system must be shut down and tested to make sure the system is safe before re-energizing. With a superior bus system, as long as a short circuit is within the rating of the system, the only requirement is for the conductors to cool down to a safe temperature, and the system can be re-energized. There is no requirement for shutting down to test the cable bus. Cable bus is generally more cost effective when compared to a bus duct system. A cable bus requires no specialized equipment to run, unlike a bus duct system which requires heaters to prevent temperature fluctuations and moisture, and special seals to prevent water intrusion into the duct. A cable bus requires no specialized equipment. The same setup is used both indoors and outdoors. Wall seals are used in order to allow the cable bus to pass through the wall while maintaining a weatherproof barrier. A fire rated wall seal restores the integrity of a fire rated wall where the cable bus passes through. An equipment seal creates a weatherproof seal allowing the cables to pass into equipment such as transformers and switch gear while keeping the elements out at the same time. As a result, a superior bus system is a more cost-effective and simpler system as compared to bus duct. The biggest disadvantage to a bus duct system is the extensive maintenance required to the weather seals. If neglected, the weather seals will fail, resulting in water intrusion into the bus duct, 
When water intrudes into a bus duct, it can short out the conductors, resulting in a catastrophic failure. Unlike a bus duct, a cable bus is virtually maintenance-free and impervious to weather. Rain or snow is no problem for a cable bus. This is especially useful in situations where the cable bus is buried underground within a trench. In the event of the trench flooding, there is no harm done to the cable bus system. In the event of a bus duct failure, the entire bus duct system will have to be replaced. Most electrical inspection authorities will not allow the replacement of a potentially damaged section. The reasoning behind this is because the water can flow throughout the bus duct, compromising the entire system. Instead of replacing only the damaged section, the entire system has to be replaced. Aside from the lower cost of a superior bus system, we also have a much longer service life as compared to a bus duct. Cable bus is designed for a 99-year lifespan, and customers should see 40 to 50 years of use with little to no maintenance. A bus duct, however, requires frequent maintenance according to the manufacturer. About every six months, it must be inspected to ensure the joints are still tied, the friction connections are not worn, and the seals are still good. This can be a large undertaking for the customer. Failure to do these inspections will result in a catastrophic failure with no warranty coverage on the system due to neglect. In the event of a bus duct failure, once again, the entire bus duct system will have to be replaced. Compared to a bus duct, the only maintenance that needs to be done on a cable bus is the cleaning of any leaves, tree branches, or debris off the cable bus yearly in the event that the cable bus is installed in a forest or a wooded area. As an example of the maintenance-free nature of a superior bus, we completed a project on a wind farm in Canada seven and a half years ago. Our first de-energization of the system was last week in order to inspect their equipment and turbine systems. Cable bus is one of the reasons why they only have to perform this maintenance every eight years. No maintenance was required on the cable bus itself. A bus duct would have required the system to be de-energized and inspected every six months. The bus duct would have most likely failed by now due to the fact that the system runs outdoors as well as in an underground trench. The Superior Bus is durable and can survive in almost any environment, including hazardous atmospheres. We have supplied Superior Bus systems for foundries with high ambient temperatures, potash mines, and we are currently designing a system for a hydrogen plant. We design our Superior Bus system to suit its service environment. As an example, we designed and built a system made from 316 stainless steel to withstand the caustic effects of hydrogen sulfide in a wastewater treatment plant. We've also designed a system for sulfur dioxide and salt cake environment, which would compromise the conductor insulation. In this case, we designed and built a sealed system to house the cables in a safe environment. The system has been in service and problem-free for over 12 years now. Another solution for toxic environments is to use a non-metallic housing. Instead of using fiberglass, which is too brittle to withstand the sudden shock load of a short circuit, we use a glass-reinforced high-strength polymer system. Generally, our polymer bus is just a portion of the cable bus system within the toxic environment, or in a situation where the cable bus cannot be conductive, with the rest of the system being metallic. When a customer orders a superior bus system, we design the system to their measurements and build the system accordingly. However, we give customers the option to cut trays on site to suit their own application, which makes the Superior Bus system field adaptable. Bus duct systems do not provide such flexibility. A Superior Bus system is fully ventilated to allow air to pass through the bus, cooling the conductors. This results in a higher ampacity rating on a smaller cable without any specialized equipment. Unlike a cable bus, a bus duct system may require forced air cooling in order to cool the conductors for high ampacity systems. The next section is safety of the cable bus. We carry full CSA certifications for the cable bus, UL certification for the grounding conductor, so we can be installed in the United States. This, with our stringent quality control, guarantees the safety of our systems because they are reviewed regularly by outside code bodies. Our certifications guarantee that customers will always receive a high quality product. This is the end of the first part of the first training session on superior bus systems.